The ability to discriminate between what's near and what's far is known as depth perception. Depth perception relies on two types of cues, monocular and binocular. Monocular cues allow us to judge depth with the use of one eye, but binocular cues require the use of both eyes. This tricky topic will focus on binocular depth cues. We can easily perceive height, width, and depth in our three-dimensional world, but it may surprise you that the images that are projected onto the retina are only in two dimensions, height and width. So, how are we able to perceive depth? The biggest influence on our ability to perceive depth comes from binocular depth cues. That is, the information coming from both eyes, which provides depth information to the brain. To better visualize how images from the visual world travel from the eyes to the brain, let's look at a top-down view of the human visual pathway. Information from our visual world enters through both eyes, hitting each retina at a slightly different angle. So, each eye gets a slightly different perspective of the visual scene. We can divide our field of view into two parts, the left visual field and the right visual field. Light from the left visual field enters the inside part contacting the retina of the left eye and the outside part of the right eye. After leaving the retina, the information from the left visual field travels through the optic chiasm, where the information from the left eye crosses over to the right hemisphere, while the information from the right eye remains on the right side of the brain. The result is that all the information from the left visual field, which is picked up by both eyes, is in the right hemisphere. The signal then travels to the thalamus and then finally to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Similarly, the same sequence of events occurs for information from the right visual field, which also travels to both eyes, with the signal from the right eye crossing over at the optic chiasm so that all the information from the right visual field is in the left cortex, which can then travel to the left thalamus and left visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Now that we understand how information from the visual fields enters the eye, let's look at some visual stimuli to try and see how those two images, the one projected on the left eye and the one projected on the right eye, differ. Let's say you're looking at this coffee cup with both of your eyes open. It would look something like this. If you close your right eye and keep your left eye open, the view of the cup changes. The shift happens in the opposite direction when you close your left eye and now open your right eye. Keep switching between your left and right eyes and you will see each views the cup at a slightly different angle. This means that a slightly different image is being projected onto your right and left retinas. You can try this yourself by holding your finger out in front of your face. As you open and close each eye, you'll notice not only does the view of your finger change, but so does the background. It also appears to shift. Now, if you move your finger further away from your eyes, and alternate between your left and right eye open, you should notice that your finger relative to the background seems to shift less. Your brain integrates the images from each eye, compares the relative differences between the two, and is able to interpret how far the item you're viewing is from your face. The more of a shift, the closer the object. The less of a shift, the further away the object must be. This phenomenon, known as binocular disparity, is what movie producers use to trick your brain into perceiving three dimensions when you're watching a 3D movie. The glasses you wear allow your eyes to perceive two slightly different images, which your brain integrates into one three-dimensional image. In addition to binocular disparity, 
your brain is also able to use the information from the muscles that allow your eyes to move around in their sockets. Put your finger in front of you at about an arm's length. Now, stare at your finger while moving it closer to your face. As you move your finger towards your face, your eyes turn inwards towards your nose to follow the path of your finger. If you move your finger away again, your eyes turn away from your nose. When your eyes move inward, this is known as convergence. As your eyes converge, the muscles controlling the movement contract. Your brain interprets this contraction and uses it to perceive distance. So, to summarize, there are two binocular processes that contribute to depth perception. The first is binocular disparity, which is the comparison of the differences between left and right retinal images. Binocular disparity is useful for judging depth in the distance beyond about three meters. The second process that contributes to depth perception is convergence, which is the feedback from contraction of the eye muscles. This is best for judging the distance of objects within about three meters of the face. Binocular depth perception comes in two flavors, but what they have in common is that these two methods require the use of both eyes. Our ability to judge visual depth is critical for us to gauge distances between objects and thus to maneuver with ease through our three-dimensional worlds. 